Welcome to the Exploring Potential podcast, where we delve into the realm of unique and novel ideas within organizations. Join us as we uncover the driving force behind innovation and success by engaging in thought-provoking conversations and stories with some of the brightest minds in various fields. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us and welcome to the Exploring Potential podcast. I'm your host, Brett King. I'm extra excited for this episode because today is our second installment in our mini-series on building trust within our organizations and with our customers. On the last episode in this series, we talked about how organizational consistency creates your brand. And for the trusted brand, people pay more, come back more often, and tell others. This got me thinking about how businesses can grow their brand in a positive way and really stand out knowing how challenging brand differentiation can be these days. It's really going to come down to a new component of building trust. Speaking of the importance of trust, I read that a recent study showed consumers only believe about 6% of what customers, I'm I'm sorry, what companies say in advertising, but they believe 75% of what employees say about their own company. So our employees can be the absolute best brand ambassadors for us, but how can we get their buy-in? Once again today, we will be joined by expert business coach Mike Vian to discuss this key aspect to building trust and specific tactics for how we can utilize this concept to move our businesses forward. Before we jump in, I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor. Today's episode of the Exploring Potential podcast is proudly presented by Cinetrain, providing the highest quality employee training, onboarding, and development solutions for cinemas across the U.S., Canada, and Latin America. Cinetrain helps cinemas attract and retain top talent, standardize onboarding and training, and increase revenue while decreasing operational costs. You can learn more at Cinetrain.com. Now, I'm very excited to welcome back to the show certified business coach and executive coach and director of sales at Cinetrain, Mike Vian. Mike, welcome back to the show. It's so great to have you back with us today. Thanks, Brett. Really appreciate you having me back. I'm very excited to be part of our second episode in our trust series. Round two. Here we go. I like it. Mike, we're obviously going to continue to focus on building trust. But what specific component of trust are we going to be talking about today? So today I want to talk about another one of the pillars of trust, compassion. Okay, compassion. Compassion. So that may not be, for some of our listeners, a typical word you hear in business, right? Mm -hmm. Why is compassion so important in building trust? So there's more to compassion than just empathy. Um, And it affects the bottom line much more than you would think. You know, yes, we need to deliver results as employees, as leaders, and as companies. You know, but we need to create organizations with people who care, are engaged, and feel part of something bigger. That's where compassion comes in. That makes sense. That makes absolute sense. Mm. How does compassion then, or the lack thereof, impact organizational culture and operations? You started talking about, you know, some real tangible impacts. So let's dig into that a bit. So I I think the first thing that I want to do to that is tell a story, which will really kind of illustrate where I'm getting at. So do you remember the slogan that Delta Airlines used to have? We love to fly and it shows. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know you. I know you fly Delta a lot out of Detroit. So, um, and and they did. They 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 did love to fly, and it did show. And people, you know, people really appreciated the airlines for what they did and the service that they they delivered. However, at one point, they went through a major merger, and it was with people that were profit only focused. And what happened here is that all of a sudden. The employees did not feel empowered. They would not feel part of the team. And they certainly did not feel proud to be working for that organization. There was even sort of a little joke. The internal slogan became, we're unhappy and it shows. 
And oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And what this did was it created an ineffective culture that trickled down to poor guest experience. Okay. Now, thankfully, a new group came in and created a culture where people felt part of a team. They felt appreciated. They felt like they were an integral part of that organization. Um, that led to Delta being listed as one of the top 10 most relevant companies. Now, what relevant means is the amount and percentage of positive comments that are left on social media. And guess what? The majority of those positive posts were driven by Delta employees. Okay. Again, let's go back to what you said. Mm. Brand ambassadors, people believe the employee more than they believe the advertising from the company itself. So it was really, really important that now this team was back and they were driving all the positive messaging. The companies, you know, basically I'd say the compassionate internal culture that had now been created at Delta trickle down to customer satisfaction and Delta was back again. That's fascinating. Yeah. I mean, so many, so many pieces of this to, that we could, I mean, we could spend the whole episode on, but it's, it's very interesting to me. I think one of the big key takeaways in this situation is when it's a culture that leans into compassion and where employees feel supported, that experience of being an employee has has two key impacts. The first key impact is that it directly impacts how guests are serviced and then ultimately how guests are feeling, right? Because right. if you're unhappy, you're not showing up, you know, and that's gonna show with your guest service. Like you said, guest service kind of slumped, right? And then the, the second piece of that is that the employees, as you had mentioned earlier, become amb ambassadors, brand ambassadors for the company. And that's, you can't get marketing or advertising to do what your own employees can do by bragging about where they work, by being proud of where they work. I mean, uh, we talked about it in the beginning in the stat that, you know, so many more people are going to believe and listen to what's being said by the employee about their company. And this all stems from a culture of compassion, right? That's right. And, and let me interject real quick. I, I think... On the first episode, we talked about how important it was to recognize that trust can be actively built. And I think in that example, that story we just talked about through Delta, we actually showed how the compassion component of building trust was broken down, but then actively built back. So this mm. isn't a, you either have it or you don't. Again, it can be actively built through this pillar. I love that you that you said that ends a perfect segue because I, I I do want to ask you how can we build and support compassionate teams and leaders within our organization? Like I love that you just confirmed. Look, look at this Delta story. It can be done. This is a muscle that can be built. So how can we build that muscle? Yeah, sure. So um, David Horsiger and, and the Trust Outlook Research Team have been doing surveys and research and they found that there are four key ways that we can show compassion in the workplace. You can remember the ways to do this through the acronym LAWS, L-A-W-S. L is listening, A is appreciation, the W is wake up and be present, and the S is serve selflessly. So let's, let's start by talking about the L, listening, okay? As organizations and leaders, we absolutely need to hear everyone's voice and ideas. We need to let them know that they are being heard. I think it's equally as important that not only are we listening, but we're creating a safe environment where employees actually feel comfortable raising their hand and saying, I object, or I have another idea I think we should consider, and that you'll truly do that. Um, you know, I, I was reading, I was reading an, uh, a story about this, and the chief people uh, officer at Cabbage, her name is Amy Zimmerman. 
she had a quote that I thought really kind of talked to, to how important it is to listen. She said, when people feel heard, they feel cared for. And when people feel cared for, they do good work and they want to stay in an environment where they feel respected and appreciated. So that actually right. is a really nice segue for me to just start talking about appreciation, okay? So sure. a Gallup poll recently determined that the number one reason people leave an organization is not feeling appreciated. And so to be able to show this appreciation, I think the first thing that we want to do is we want to be specific. We don't want to just say to somebody, hey, good job, and leave it at that. It's more when you're passing somebody in the hall or you're on a call with someone, say, hey, I saw what you did today. You know, you spent a lot of time on that. I know how much work went into it, and yet you still came in on time and under budget. That was hugely impactful to the organization. Thank you. You know, try to do that. And then within that, be personal. Don't just wait for the end of the year holiday party to give somebody an appreciation uh, trophy, right? Appreciate them there. And, you know, I think being personal, how about leaving a gift card to their favorite coffee shop on their desk or even something as, as crazy as put their favorite candy bar on their desk with a little note of appreciation. It really shows them that you're, you're really noticing them, not just the work. And then that just kind of leads right. into me saying, we, we also personal. have to make sure when we're showing this appreciation, we need to be sincere, right? If we're not being authentic, people will absolutely positively see right through you. Um, but right. when you have a coworker or a boss show you appreciation, it's incredibly energizing, Brett. Um, you know, it can make you feel like Superman. And I'd love to share a quick little story that I have, not a business story, but a personal story. So back in high school, my parents went away for the weekend. And on that Sunday, I woke up and realized, oh, they're coming home today. I better start to clean the place up. But I even took it a step further. I don't know what got into me. I went down to the garage and I decided I was going to clean and reorganize the garage. I was probably biting off a little bit more than I can chew, but <laughs> Hours and hours later, it was perfect. I was very proud of, of what I did. And when my parents came home, they noticed when they parked in the garage and came upstairs. They even joked of like, what did you do that you cleaned the garage? <laughs> um, <laughs> what are you making up for here? Yeah, that's right. But here's the punchline. Later that day, some of our, our neighbors were over. My parents were out on our porch talking to them. And I overheard my dad saying, you have to see what my son did. And they walked my neighbors down to the garage and they showed them what they, what they did. And I sort of, sort of heard those oohs and ahs. And I have to tell you, I think that's the first time where I really recognized the power of appreciation because I didn't just feel like the dependent in the family who needed to be taken care of. All of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, I'm part of this household and I'm actually contributing to being part of this household. It, it was really energizing. And yeah, oh my gosh, you must have felt so energized and so proud um, to to be a part of, you know, the fact that your dad was bragging about you, right? There's a sense of pride. Um, you took a sense of pride in just living there, right? Which is not necessarily always typical of, of teenagers or kids in general. Mm. <laughs> you know, you took pride in there. I get on my kids all the time, you know, throw your wrappers away, right? Like, this is not, this is not a garbage can. Take pride in your house, right? Right. Um, it, it's a it's a magical feeling when you when you feel appreciated and when that's expressed by a person of authority or even your colleagues, right? Mm -hmm. Just being recognized for that for that work. And I think you know, I, I mean, I certainly know how that feels. I I also unfortunately know the opposite, right? Of of how it feels when you're not appreciated in the workplace. And and I'm sure you have a lot to say on that. And and one thing I wanted to mention is you know as you were talking about these first two listen and appreciate i started thinking about on linkedin you know we we've got a, a decent amount of connections and 
What I see is an interesting trend in individuals starting to share like memes or inspirational quotes that are meant to give kind of business advice to like CEOs, like saying, appreciate your people yeah. um, or listen or, you know, things like that. And it's it's really interesting. I've actually witnessed several times now, like an increase in certain individuals, like reposting things like that and then ultimately leaving their job. Like oh. ultimately, like it's almost like a predictor, right? I see them share these things or like these things and then almost like the stock market, right? You can almost like just project out and then sure enough, at some point in the near future, they're look, either looking for a new job or they've gotten a new job. And it it just like these themes of listen and appreciate are always tied into the quotes or the memes that get shared. Um, so it's just an interesting, it's my own perspective, obviously, but yeah. it's it's very interesting when that happens. But you know, like I said, I I mean, I personally know I, I've already told my story on this podcast before, so I'll spare it. But you know, I came from a workplace that was the epitome of lack of appreciation, um, so I know how that feels as well, and and I'm sure you do too. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting that you say that, and I think it's a great observation on LinkedIn. Um, there's a study that was recently done uh, by USC and the University of Florida. And it showed that belittlement reduced an employee's productivity by 33%. And wow. at the same time, it reduced brainstorming ideas by 39%. So, you know, to your point, what you see is how appreciation can be a driver. And the opposite here, belittlement actually has people crawling back into their shells and probably the impetus behind those memes on LinkedIn saying, hey, I need to be appreciated here because this isn't working. So, right. you know, I, I don't want to forget about the W or the S. So, right. you know, what I'll say, W stands for wake up and be present. And I think the best way to describe what I mean by that is there is absolutely no empathy or sincerity in the presence of a cell phone. But have you, have you ever tried to have a conversation, a one-on-one -on -one, or a meeting with somebody that is just nonstop checking their emails and their tasks, texts? It's impossible. Oh, it's impossible. It's, it's agitating. It's like, and it's obvious, right? Some people are good at reading body language. Mm. You don't have to be good at reading body language to know that that person in front of you is not paying attention to you. That's right. And there's, and you're going to know right there, this person doesn't really want to give me feedback. Doesn't really, isn't really concerned with what I have to say. So, you know, that goes into the S. So the S stands for serve selflessly. Another way, another way that we can work compassion into the workplace. Serve selflessly. I am certainly not implying in any way that we should be a doormat. You know, we all need to stand up for what is right and what is true. That's extremely important. But putting others and the company ahead of yourself and not expecting anything in return will undoubtedly not only create, but main tr maintain trust in, in your organization. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. So, so well put mm. is as we, as we start to wind down, is there anything else on trust or compassion that you feel would be beneficial to share? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think our listeners can probably tell at this point, the importance now of compassion, of compassion and building these cultural norms within our organization. Um, when those norms include things like listening, collaboration, and appreciation, what we're going to do is it's going to lead to engaged employees who believe in your purpose and proudly become your brand ambassadors. So let's go back to what you said at the beginning. Consumers trust 75% of what employees are saying about their companies creating this culture where people proudly become your brand ambassador is so important for creating that positive momentum of your brand. And 
There was a quote that I read, I think it was two or three days ago from the former chairperson and CEO of Xerox, Ann Mulcahy. So here's what she said. She said, um, employees who believe that management cares about them as a whole person, not just an employee, are more productive, more satisfied, and more fulfilled. And then she said that satisfied employees lead to satisfied customers, which leads to profitability. So I couldn't have summarized it better to really sort of encapsulate the importance of compassion and how that building that compassion component into our cultural norms is so important to our business. What a what a wonderful quote to sort of cap, <clears throat> excuse me cap this off because that does I mean that really I was going to try my hand at summarizing this right but that really sets up the entire business case for it right. um, the all the benefits that come with it and the one thing I will reemphasize that you stated really clearly that I think is a really really important thing to revisit is this compassion is not a binary you have it or you don't and best of luck if you don't right this is a situation where just like all these soft skills and cultural improvements this is something we can work on in our businesses and it's it's a way that we can show up and improve we can improve the compassion and we can do that by utilizing uh, what what you had shared laws right so it starts by listening uh appreciation Let's see if I get this right. Uh, wake up and be present. Mm -hmm. So don't be staring at your phone, right? <laughs> right. And then serving selfish, serving selflessly, not right. selfishly. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not self selfishly. But I mean, it's so you had summarized the why. This is why it's important. These are the business impacts, and here's what you're going to get out of it. And then what we just tacked on there together at the end is that's the how. Mm. So you've got the why. And you've got the how. Now go loose. Make it happen, right? Build this this culture of compassion in your organizations because you see the benefits and you also see the risks in not. We talked about the lost productivity, mm -hmm. inefficiency, the turnover, right? Versus free marketing and advertising. I mean, and that's not what it's all about, but like that's impactful. And it's it's messaging that 75% of consumers are going to listen to. So there's every reason to embrace this, right, Mike? That's right. And, you know, I I will just interject something really quickly on, on behalf of Cinetrain. You know, our onboarding and training programs, as well as, you know, advanced leadership development, it it creates a consistency and a competency so that leaders will say, yeah, I want to listen to what my employees have to say. They're competent, they know what they're doing. And I really appreciate what they're doing and I'm gonna give them my time and my attention. And then I'm going to show them what it's like to be a leader. So that proper training really allows for the compassion pillar you know, to take place and, and go into effect. Absolutely, and it's scalable. It's not you know a CEO holding the hand of somebody and teaching them how to be compassionate. It's teaching these skills in a standardized way throughout the organization as well. Sure. So it's a it's very scalable. That's fantastic, Mike. Once again, this is a wonderful conversation. This is uh, uh, as you're as you are well aware now because this is your second appearance on the show. Uh, this is the part where I'd like to pause and just give you a few moments to plug whatever is most important to you right now. Sure. So I've been thinking about this, and this one might sound a little bit odd or, 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 or funny to, to our listeners. But what I'm going to plug is a documentary that I uh, watched over the weekend on the Go-Go's. Um, and it was, so, it was somewhat serendipitous that I was watching this documentary as I was preparing notes for this very podcast. As you started to see the band fracture and break apart, it just became very obvious that compassion was the key component that was missing. So at one point, their bass guitarist, Catherine, looks into the camera and says, we didn't listen. 
um, to, I think her name, uh, Jane, right. She said, we didn't listen to Jane and what was important to her. And Jane ended up leaving the band. And then she followed by saying, we didn't appreciate the contribution that Gina was giving to the band. Gina was their drummer. So like right there, she says, we didn't listen to people. We didn't appreciate people. And then maybe even on a sadder note, they weren't paying any attention to what was going on um, with Charlotte, who is their lead guitarist. And not only was she going through a lot of pain in her life, there was she had a heroin addiction that was right in front of their face and they weren't paying enough attention to even notice. So again, I'm just going to go back and review. They weren't listening. They weren't appreciating. They certainly weren't present because there was a heroin addiction being abused right in front of them and they didn't even notice. And they certainly weren't serving selflessly because I think they were all in it for themselves. So oddly enough, Brett, the reason I bring this up, we can all learn a business lesson through the breakup of the Go-Go's. The breakup of the Go Go's. Who would have Who would have thought we could learn a, a very important business lesson? Yeah, um, it ties directly into into the law's acronym. Um, you're You're absolutely right. I appreciate you sharing that, Mike. That's a, a an excellent. Now uh, we we won't get any royalties for this, but uh, do you know where people can watch this documentary? You know what? It was on here in Los Angeles. It was actually on. Uh, KTLA, which is the local channel five here. I think it was originally produced by Showtime, but I think a, a, a simple Google search will probably lead you to where you can find it. I, I'm fairly A confident. quick Google will get you there. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want a tangible example outside of business that relates directly to what we're talking about today and the importance of compassion and building trust within our organizations, just quickly Google GoGo's documentary. Mm-hmm. And I think we'll get there. Uh, That's excellent. Mike, thank you so much for your time today and for another excellent installment in our trust series together. I can't wait for the next one. I know. I can't wait either. Well, I also want to extend my thanks to our listeners and viewers for tuning in. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you're getting value from this content. You can subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever it is that you get your podcasts. Please give us a rating and review while you're there. Just let us know how we're doing. You can also watch, like, and subscribe on YouTube. Visit exploringpotential.com for more information about our team and the work we do, and cinetrain.com for uh, the work that Mike does and the work that our teams do within the cinema space. And with that, have a great rest of your day.